Okay, so there's a couple things that we want to adjust about what's going on inside of the models. Now, first of all, we definitely don't want to create a brand new shortcode every time we save it. That is silly. Long term, we only want to create one shortcode ever, right? So let's actually, first of all, remove the code generator from models.py and make a new module called utils.py. Utils as in utility functions, that's where we're gonna put it. This is a utility function. In fact, this code generator could be used anywhere. So you might not wanna keep utils just inside of the app itself. You might wanna put it inside of the main um, Django uh, conf project folder, which is where settings is. But I'm gonna leave it inside of the app because that's all. That's the only place we're gonna be using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out of the models, put it into utils, and also cut out those imports that we used for random and string because we don't need them anymore. And now instead I'll do from .utils import code generator. Okay, so we're gonna save the code generator in both places and now it should work exactly the same. But this is not how I want it to happen. Instead, what I wanna do is in the short code, I'm gonna actually add this being blank equals to true. So what does blank mean? That means that I can have it blank on the admin. So when I actually enter it in the admin, I can actually, it's no longer required in the admin. But remember, it's still required in the database. So we still are setting it down here, but now I can actually have it being blank equals to true. So let's actually see it if I wasn't setting it. I'm gonna comment out this short code part right here, and I'll keep it as blank equals to true. So if I refresh in here, notice the bold goes away and I can actually delete this and I'll hit save and continue. It was actually saved and it was successfully there. Now there is a possibility that if, if blank equals to true and null equals to false, which is the default, null being false is the default, right? So that's the default, I don't have to declare it, but there is a possibility that that would have ran an error. In this case, it didn't run an error, it just saved it as a blank value and that's that, right? in the database, it might, it's just null in the database right now. But with other databases, there might've been an error actually thrown from Django or the database itself, because this is not good, right? I wanna make sure that I'm actually able to save it in the database. So we have to override this save method. And in this case, I had it as self.shortcode and then save generator. Now I wanna make sure that you guys know that this is actually calling the save method. So if I do anything beforehand with the instance, so that is self, and another way to look at that is object equals to self, and that's object.self.shortcode. And if you remember back into the terminal, what we were doing with the shell, um, that is what we were doing here. Instead of calling this super method, we were doing object.save, right? You probably remember that, but I just wanted to make sure that that's clear. So that's what's going on there. I'm gonna leave out that object equals to self because we don't need that. And I also don't need to print something anymore. But now what I wanna do is say if not self.shortcode, that is if shortcode is blank, so if shortcode is none or self.shortcode is equal to an empty string, then we wanna actually set it. That's the only time that we're gonna actually wanna set it and we're gonna to wanna to automatically generate it like we've done before. So let's go back in here. We'll go ahead and change this. I'll hit save and continue. Now it sets it. If I set it to something different, it, it well, it gives me this error that this shortcut already exists. So let's try another one. And there it goes. Now it's actually setting it to what I want it to be. Again, if I leave it empty, it will set it to something new. That's good because it's now generating a better shortcode, right? Which is really, really nice. Okay, so we can still take this generate code one step further. And that is something that we're gonna do right now. We're gonna jump into our utility function. And now what I'm gonna say is define create short code. And this is gonna take in the instance that we want and the length that we want or the size. Let's just leave it as size and we'll say size equals to six. So the instance being the actual model or the instance of a model itself that we're gonna be working with. So I'll just say new code equals to code generator, parentheses, but I also wanna do size equals to size. So size equals to this keyword argument of size, which is still the same, but if I changed it here, 
then it would change there as well. Okay, great. So this is gonna generate that new code for us. But now what we wanna do is we wanna to check to make sure that this actual code doesn't already exist. Like it's nowhere to be found. Now you can use this for other sorts of things and this is something that we definitely do with other sorts of things like slugs. So if you see another project, you'll see this again. But what we wanna do here is I wanna get the class from this particular instance. Now, what am I doing? If I go to Python manage.py shell, I can run a query set from importing. So if I do from um, shortener dot models import cur URL shorten, oops, let's spell that correctly. There we go. And now I can do cur URL dot objects dot all. And this gives me that query set, right? That's really good. So if I import this now, let's do it. Go ahead from shortener dot models import cur URL and save it. Oh, I get some error. Can't import it. Why can't it import it? Well, maybe it's not that obvious, but it is something that is a problem. So I'm importing from both actual modules. So in models.py, I'm importing from utils, the code generator. And then from utils, I'm importing from models. That doesn't work. You can't do that. You can't import and import. Like it's like a weird kind of logic. Like even the logic itself is kind of like, well, why would I import from one page and then import the same thing from another page? That's where the problem occurs, right? But I still want to use this model. Like I still want to actually be able to call cur URL. So how do I do this? Well, let's go ahead and comment this out. So Django doesn't get mad at us anymore. Now what I'll do is I can actually get the class of from the instance. So I'll just say cur URL equals to instance dot underscore underscore class. So this right here is getting the class directly from that cur URL. So how do I know this? Well, this is a Python, this is something in Python, right? So if I actually printed out the instance, I could see what the instance is and I can print out the instance dot class. I can also print out the instance dot, dot class dot underscore underscore name, two underscores, not three. And this will actually, this is like how the function of Python works. So these, this is the instance. So it's a created object of the class, whatever class it is. And then that's getting the actual class itself. So it's much like saying the importing the class. This is kind of like importing the class without importing the class. And this will get the actual name of it, which in this case would be cur URL, which is what we named our variable, but that's not what our variable should be named. Instead, I'm gonna call it class with a, K, with a K, because if you use a C, it's it probably could be confused with this class. So we use a K to make it clearly not the Python class, but our own inherited class. And now I can do QS as in query set equals to class dot objects dot all. And dot all is not really what we want. So let's look in the shell. And if I did dot filter, and in our case, we'll do short code equals to ABC one, two, three. I can press enter and notice that that, that actually exists. So I can actually do dot exists on that query set method and it says true. So I can do something very similar to this. Instead of dot all, we'll do filter and this is short code equals to, well, this is the new code here and then we'll do dot exists. So instead of QS, I'll just do QS underscore exists and we'll say if QS exists, then we're gonna return create short code and we'll keep with the same size. So we're just basically doing the function all over again. And then finally, we're gonna return the new code. Okay, so let's go ahead and import this now, create short code into our utility, into our model class. And we'll come in here and do create short code and we'll pass in the instance, which is of course, self. So we save that. This is now a function that's gonna work and we can see it working when we go back into our 
item, hit save and continue. Oh, let's make it empty first. Hit save and continue. It actually created something there. If we go into our terminal, we see that we got the instance here. We see the class. Notice that it actually gives us the class and where it's located. And then it gives us the class name. So that is how all of that just worked. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, you're gonna to wanna to review more stuff in Python. And since I'm able to get the class right here, I can do methods on the class. In this case, it's objects.filter, which is a built-in method of models, which we will talk about, but it's definitely something that's really nice and convenient for us in creating stuff like this that requires the class inside of our utility function. So that is this right here. Okay, so if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.